to my studio. I'm Kathy Thurston and I'm going to show you how I do my Chinese ink and painting. Come on in. All right, here is my studio and I wanted to tell you not just about my art but how I'm inspired to do my art. And I think one of the biggest things that helps me is I go on adventures. And I love wildlife. And the last adventure I went was on a trip up to Alaska, and we went to Seward Sea Life Center, and I took photos of puffins, and that's the inspiration for my art that you're going to see today. And so I have a beautiful tufted puffin right here. This is Dory, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make Dory a beautiful painting in Chinese ink and color. So come on in and let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I did a detailed sketch of Dory. And this is Dory as she's landing on a beautiful island out in Alaska. And this is the background with some little islands and we're going to paint that. So as soon as I've got the sketch, I put it under a piece of rice paper. And I'm going to start tracing it with pencil first, which I've done. Just take a pencil here and start tracing in all the details of Dory. And you're going to see her come out. Like this. Start with the eye always. And put that beautiful eye in about the upper two-thirds of the painting, which is where I really want to have my focus. And I'm going to outline her, which I've actually done already. And then I'm going to paint her in Chinese ink. And Chinese ink is actually a little ink here that I'm going to have set up. It's made out of fish bone that's been made into charcoal and ground down. And I'm going to start inking her. And I'll start by outlining her and eventually I'm going to be shading her in. And when I'm done she's going to look like a black and white photograph. So I'm going to start with her eye. And when when you work with Chinese ink and color, you use the brush just like a marker. And so I'm going to be, it's going to take me a while to do this, but you can see what the idea is in. The idea is. <laughs> and you use two brushes in Chinese ink and color. One brush is to bring in the intense black ink, and then the other is going to be something that I use to brush it out to bring out the values in it. I'm going to brush in this area, the dark area right here on the puffin. I'll just show you how I'm going to do the values in that. Right, so we're going to put the values in and the way we do that is start with some very intense ink and then I'm going to use a second brush to draw it out and to make it more lighter in value. And with Chinese ink, it's once the ink is down, it's down, so it's not something you can change. So you have to really plan ahead with this. But um, this is a style of painting called Gong Bi painting, and it was started during the time of the emperor in the Han Dynasty by women who were in concubines. And they really had no place to go while they were waiting for the emperor. And so they took up a lot of um, crafts and arts. And this style of painting is one that they developed many centuries ago. And it's been copied by the Japanese and Korean art communities, and you will see it in a lot of fine art that they do. It's called a detail style of painting, as opposed to the other Shei type, which is the Sumi painting. And uh, in Sumi painting, you do a lot of brush strokes that are very controlled in a particular style. So here's Dory, 
our little puffin is getting some form with darker ink and I'm beginning to do the foreground. Okay, we've done a little bit of the beak now and around the eye and I'm going to go on to put in a nice blend of indigo and uh, a red and try to bring out the intensity of the dark colors on the feathers. So we'll start at the head. And I'm going to use the same technique as before with a pigment brush, which I'm using right now, and I'm going to use the second brush as a water brush to dry out the color here. And it'll meld right into the black ink, and you would not even see the black when we're done. And that's beginning to intensify the feathers on that black area of the bird. This color tends to be very bright and intense as you're painting it, and as it dries it will become much more subtle. So you may think it looks like a blueberry bird right now, but <laughs> when we're done it should look more like a puffin. This new layer over it to give it a more three-dimensional look. I really enjoy blending colors that are opposite on the color wheel in layers. It really gives it an underglow. In watercolors. That's called glazing. So I am glazing if you want to call it something in Western watercolor terms. Gonna add a little bit here. Under the wings it's really dark and as you get out underneath the under carriage of the bird where the sun is highlighting his feathers, it becomes lighter and warmer. So as I'm going along, I'm adding just a little bit more of the red to this. Oops, we need some more red. There we go. Dory's beginning to have a little bit of a shape and form that looks more intense. In this painting, the pigment is the color, but the water is the highway for the paint to travel. So I'm creating a little highway for the paint to seep along and bring that pigment where it needs to be. I feel like Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move up to the wings now. This is starting to look better.
This is the fun part. This is what I really enjoy is just letting the paint travel and do its thing. I'm trying to leave a little bit of light here just to give it a little extra oomph, a little extra contrast. But if I, for some reason, forget to leave a little light or white, in Chinese painting, it's very forgiving because they give you Chinese white and you can go back and add some of that in. It's different than Western watercolor, transparent watercolor, where you wouldn't be allowed in some of the clubs to enter a painting if you'd used an opaque color. So I'll probably never be an opaque watercolor artist because this is really more fun for me. And you can start seeing some of the colors emerge now in the highlights. It's just my cup of tea. I'm covering up some of that gold, but not all of it. to accentuate some of the shadows in here that you would see in a bird that's lit up by the sun. Okay, I think we'll give it a rest here and let this dry before I go on and see where to go. I guess I still need to do this black wing, and I want to do that in the back, but I want it to recede because of the distance. I'll start here with some of the color that we were using before, but I'm going to go real easy on the color, and if I need to, I can come back and add some, but I want it, that wing to look like it's a little bit further back than the rest of the bird. Okay, we're going to just stop right there. Hi, we're back again. I'm going to put the red in the eye and in the beak and start making the bird pop out a little bit. So let's get going here. I've got this beautiful poppy red and we're going to start with beak here and orange it up a little bit here. This is going to be a little bit shocking, but it will really make it start to look like a puffin here. around the beak there's a little area looks like a little hinge and that's also bright orange and finally the eye These little birds are known as the clowns of the Puffin family, for the Puffin family. And they kind of do have that look. <laughs> okay. We're going to stop right there. That red eye ring is pretty intense. We'll see how that works. Okay, we're going to stop right here and add a little more gold to this golden eyebrow here. It looks like it needs a little help. So we're going to just warm this up a little bit.
we're doing the upper part of the beak here. And this is actually a little cuff that sits upon the beak. When you see the animals, you don't realize it, but it's almost like a fingernail, but it protects the beak as they're eating. From uh, fish and bones and rocks and wet barnacles. Okay, we're going to stop here. It's been a pleasure showing you how I do my Chinese ink and color. And next time I'll see you, I'll be telling you about my next adventure out on the water. I hope to see you kayaking soon. Bye.